but just wash your gear. Come on, it's not that hard. I'm getting ready to put the detergent in mine and get ready for next week. So until then, you guys be easy. We'll see you on the mats. Mats, where we're going, we don't need mats. So there's my Back to the Future Doc Brown impression. You better have enjoyed it. For those of you that don't know, my name is Alex Green. This is my YouTube channel. This is video number 44 in the series I'm doing on high school wrestling rules. And this video is going to be on a topic, a subject that I have, even when I wrestled back in the late 90s, early 2000s, coaches then say it, and I'm sure it's been said for far before that and even today, Heard it at my latest meet I was at on a Sunday. I'm filming this on a Wednesday. So just a few days ago, I heard this. I said, I've got to do a video about this. And it is, in my opinion, one of the most misunderstood, misapplied, and just flat out sometimes just wrongly used phrase in all of wrestling. Take a guess what it is. If you were paying attention to the thumbnail and to the link description you clicked on, you probably guessed it. But it is on the situation when coaches yell free move after the offensive wrestler locks hands and they get the the referee shows the locking hands signal that is referee number 17 in the 2020-2021 rule book it's a technical violation of rule 7 section 3 article 3. if you're watching this chances are you're familiar with the sport of boxing and the sport of MMA and just about every state that you hear when the referees bring the fighters in or every promotion in every state they'll come in they'll say protect yourself at all times wrestlers you wrestle at all times just because the official has signaled a penalty whether it's locking hands or whatever the case is you continue to wrestle until the referee blows the whistle and like taps you on the shoulder or steps in between you if you're on your feet and in your neutral position you keep wrestling do not rely on the referee to stop the match in an appropriate time the you may have a new official may get confused may we're we're human we're gonna make mistakes so never rely on the referee to solely take up for that do your part and wrestle through the whistle always always protect yourself at all times wrestle the entire time until the referee stops the bout. You should know from watching this channel the penalty progression, but I'll go through it real quick. Technical violations, unnecessary roughness, unsportsmanlike conduct during the match, and illegal holds. The first penalty is one match point. The second penalty is one more match point. The third is two match points. And then the fourth is a DQ. Now those are cumulative. You can have two unnecessary roughness, a technical violation, and an illegal hold, and just whatever. Four penalties of that, and you're done. Now we know that the referee is supposed to give the defensive wrestler a few seconds to escape or try to get a reversal or something to the, you know, go out of bounds, whatever the case is. Like I just said a second ago, wrestle at all times, protect yourself at all times. Now let's say that the defensive wrestler does get an escape. The referee does what he, he or she's supposed to, give the call. We have one point red, locking hands green, then they would signal the escape, one red, we're neutral. So wrestle, you keep wrestling. Don't stop till the whistle, that's what I'm trying to get at. Don't rely on, on the official to always stop it and you don't want to put it on your back, you don't want to have something go on, you get up and say, well, I thought you was gonna stop it. Well, you need to wrestle through the whistle. Another reason why the term free move is wrongly used is you gotta take into consideration blood Injury time, injury timeouts. Now we also know we have recovery and we have the concussion time. We won't really talk about those on this video, but let's think about blood and injury time. Let's say for example that the offensive wrestler locks hands, the defensive wrestler's coach, free move, free move, and the defensive wrestler tries to hit some grandies or tries to hit some type of you know crazy escape or crazy reversal to get out. And the offensive wrestler, he's holding on, he or she's holding on with the lock and hands waiting for the referee to call. And they come up and the defensive wrestler has a bloody nose. So the defensive wrestler may have already used four minutes and 55 seconds of their blood time. They get up, 
nose is bleeding, guess what? Match is over with. Now, what, as long as it wasn't a unnecessary roughness act, unsportsmanlike conduct, illegal hold, something to that effect, it's going to be counted as blood time. Or if you get hurt, it's going to be injury time. Let's say you've already taken two timeouts. The third injury timeout ends the bout. Guess, guess what happens? The, unless it was that wrestler's, the offensive wrestler at locked hands, unless it was their fourth penalty, then that would be a match DQ and the defensive wrestler would win. But if it wasn't and the wrestler was injured at their own fault, trying to move, come up with a busted nose, busted mouth, whatever the case is, then the defensive wrestler would have to use their injury time their and for an injury timeout and their blood time. And you could very well wind up losing the match that way. So not a free move. Another scenario why the term free move is wrong is because the stalling also goes into effect here. Now the rule book really doesn't give us any guidance on it and this is one that you just have to use your brain on, use your mind, your experience is offensive wrestler locks hands on top, the defensive wrestler just goes spread eagle, doesn't try to move. Okay now that may be the offensive wrestler's first penalty, they signal it properly, but the, the referee could also signal stalling on the bottom wrestler for not trying to escape and they just go spread eagle and not do anything. That could be the determining factor. The match could be tied. It could be the, that wrestler's fourth. They may already have four stalling calls. We know the fifth one now terminates the match. So that's another scenario. Unlikely, but still something you need to be in the back of your mind or even like going out of bounds, that trying to get up, get away, whatever, not making an effort to stay in bounds even after hands have been locked. You, and that's something that you need to keep in the back of your mind. The term free move is not a free move. So wrestlers and coaches alike understand that the term free move is, or when the offensive wrestler locks hands and the referee gives the lock and hand signal, it's not a get out of jail free card. You need to wrestle, you need to make an attempt to escape, an attempt to reverse, get a reversal, put the, uh, the offensive wrestler on their back, like whatever move you choose to do. But it's not a get out of jail free, I can do this without repercussions or without consequence type of scenario. And this is a very misapplied scenario. This is a very wrongly used term that is used, I'm going to guess, across the nation. If it's not the term free move, it's something similar to that. So I know I've, I've got to referee people from all, about all over the United States, whether it's at tournaments or at the um, tournament I've done in Gatlinburg that you guys saw the vlog for. And every time I've seen a referee give the signal, coaches, fans, parents, whoever, free move, free move, free move, go crazy, free move, free move. So this should educate you that, yes, you will get a penalty point, but you still need to wrestle smart and you need to wrestle under control and not do something that get yourself hurt or cause yourself a penalty point like for a stall or something to that effect. So until then, you guys be easy. Watch my vlogs. I'm vlogging all the my meets that I'm going to get to attend this year and they're in different videos. I'm doing one week. If I do three meets, it's going to be in one vlog. That way I'm not you know, putting my channel with a bunch of videos that's really short. I'm trying to get everything into one. If you found this video useful, share it with your team page, your travel team page, your officials page, whatever the case is. Tell somebody about the channel. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the mats.